Hey folks, this is Dennis here at uh, Red Fox Outfitters, and um, I spent a lot of quality time back here in the fly shop because it's such a cool place to be. Uh, but today I'd like to talk about uh, a question I get a lot, and that is, it's winter time, it's cold, I want to go fishing, what's the best way to go about that? Um, to start with, you know, winter time, uh, just like myself here, the fish kind of go into hibernation. So, you're not going to find them out there actively feeding. They're not going to behave like they normally do in the summertime. Uh, they are going to be in a semi-hibernation kind of state. They're going to be looking to be hiding in an area where they can save their energy, kind of wait for spring to show up. But, but they're still active, all right? They're still out there. They're still feeding when the opportunity presents itself. You, yourself, just have to look at a different location for them, a different time for them and your technique needs to be a little bit different. So, to start with, walking up to the stream, what we're looking for is, we're looking for a little depth. We're, we're looking for some shelter behind a, a large rock. Um, I myself don't like fishing in the great, big, huge, deep holes. What I'm usually looking for is more of a pocket water here. And, and I'm looking for that little lip, that little break in the water where the fish will just kind of tuck back up in there and he settles down in there. Same way as behind rocks, behind structure, behind uh, uh, logs and such. So that's where they're kind of hiding. Now, in the spring, you can throw something out there uh, and, and offer that fish uh, something tempting, and he's gonna swim probably several feet if he wants to go get that. In the winter time, you're gonna have to hit him right on the nose, all right? He's not gonna spend a lot of energy. He's real smart about this. If a tidbit comes down and it's only got 10 calories, he can afford to maybe spend five or six calories trying to eat it, but he's got to put a big effort into getting that. He's not going to go after that. So with that in mind, it's really location. It's really offering something the right pinpoint on where that fish is at. And you got to offer him something uh, that he wants to take. Um, he's still eating anything with protein that kind of comes down the water. Um, and really this is a great time of year. Continue to use our egg patterns. All right, uh, the uh, salmon are kind of came and went, so a lot of the eggs are gone, but the suckers are gonna be showing up here in the spring. So that's what our sucker spawn really starts to go ahead and be effective. I love rock worms and um, stone flies. Uh, so any of those uh, are a great offering on that. Now, one of the things to keep in mind is, is the fact that you probably want to go a little bigger in size than what you normally do. And, and the reason for that is, is that whole calorie thing again. You know, he's more likely to go out there and grab a nice pork chop floating down the water than he is to go out there and, and grab a crumb. So go a little bigger than what you're normally used to when you're throwing some, um, uh, any of your flies back out there. Also, you might kind of wonder, like, you know, I mentioned sucker spawn. What, why am I throwing sucker spawn out there? It's kind of a little bit early for that. True, but, it, but I kind of use this analogy, right? You know, if I'm sitting here, coming to work on a fine, uh, you know, Friday evening here, and a chocolate chip cookie kind of wanders by my way, I, I'm gonna take advantage of that opportunity, all right? So I'm not gonna let that pass it by. Now, do I see a chocolate chip cookie every day? No, but when they show up in crust, I am definitely gonna go ahead and jump on this thing. So, with that in mind, also, um, steelhead, all right? Same techniques for the steelhead. Steelhead are in the rivers now. They're gonna get great between now and spring. Awesome time to be out there in the water to get that. Uh, with the steelhead, what you wanna do out there is same kind of techniques, all right? Give him something there that he doesn't have to work too hard to go after. Now, the only other thing I wanted to add to that too is the steelhead are aggressive fish. I kinda of like to go ahead and, and if I can't, convince one to eat here on these methods here, I'll go for the kind of shock and awe, all right? I'll toss something with some sparkle, all right? A little streamer swung down right in front of his nose. It's gotta be enticing here. Now, he's not really gonna hammer that to eat it. He's gonna hammer it because he's pissed off at it, all right? He's gonna wanna go ahead and say, hey, you know, you're irritating me. I'm having a great time today here and you're out here in front of my nose. He will attack that. One of the other things I wanna to mention too is take advantage of the weather. All right. Um, if it's blistering cold out there, eh, maybe staying on a couch or tying some flies is a better option. But what you want to look for is take a look at your calendar or look at your weather forecast here. And if you see a slight warming trend, 
where all of a sudden you're going to have a nice warm day midweek or something like that. Target that day. All right. So if you think about the fish here, you know, they're already in the very cold water. So any slight increase in temperature in our water is going to probably raise their appetite a little bit. Uh, likewise, don't worry about fishing the crack of dawn or late in the evening. That's going to be colder parts of the day. Uh, the warmer part of the day, the middle of the afternoon, take advantage of that because the fish are going to take advantage of that too. So, any other questions, give us a call down here. We love to talk fishing. Everybody have a great day.